Okay, so we've rebooted our server. We've got a thumb drive in there to build a Ubuntu system. Just gotta wait a little while while machine gets going. This, uh, by the way, is not the same machine server that uh, my web pages are going to be served from. This one's just for GitLab to run on. F, F, I spoke about this before, but F11, that's the function key on this machine. This is the HP ProLiant series. It's F11 gets you into a boot menu. And I think choice three was USB drive. So if you don't always have to go into the BIOS to force it to boot from other sources. Yeah, see, uh, one would be CD. We want three for USB drive. And there's your Linux running the installer, English, yep. Install your Ubuntu server, yep. Sometimes you want to check the RAM and stuff if you're working with a new machine. Uh, corrupted, blah, blah, blah. English, United States, I don't care about. Yes, yes. A lot of click and wait installing servers. Question for the Ethernet connector, and yeah, that's the one I want. And good guess. So I'm going to keep that host name. You don't need to see this. Ugh. Stupid space bar never fires when I want it to. And you don't need to see that either. And I mentioned before I got to do password in the clear on mine installs because my keyboard works so badly that I'm not sure what keys are actually firing so but you don't get to see my pass a word in the clear yep New York. Okay, yeah, LVM is good. You're basically, oh, that's not the right one. There, there you go, big drive. Don't want to try and do it on the installed uh, thumb drive. Yep, go ahead, do that. And use the whole thing, yep. Yep. So, uh, while this is going on, the, the other server install I showed how to do uh, at the start of these, this series, that one was a particular one. Uh, it was to install, uh, to, to have a base LAMP stack and open secure socket layers installed. This one in particular is 
going to have a stack on it, but I don't want the lamp stack because it seems like GitLab, the software, likes to run with the Engine X for its web serving and the the Ubuntu install does not show an option to pick a different stack other than the the standard lamp. So uh, when we get to that point, which is probably another 10 minutes from now, the uh, the choice for lamp is going to be left unselected. Okay, uh, nothing there. I like it. I like to have my security updates automatically. If you're uh, really worried about things, you might want to leave that and manually install them after you make sure that nobody else had problems with the security update. But uh, I'm not that good. I trust the uh, developers. Okay. Yeah. So this the all right, we we don't want the lamp server this time. Sometimes you'll see to install the mail server, but me personally, on this case, I'm not. And that manual package, I don't know, last time I tried it, it didn't seem to go anywhere. I remember in the past, what it would do is you, it would open you up into a selection screen that showed uh, basically every piece of software in the app repository. And uh, you could pick them one at a time. If that worked, we could have gone in there and looked for Nginx and installed that. PHP installed that. You know, instead, we only have this choice for a LAMP stack or none. So. Ah, here we go. Yep, that's a good spot. Okay, pull the thumb drive out and continue. Basically, I could have walked away already, but I uh, figure I'll leave the recorder go on and see if there's any significant error messages on the first thing. for the video and a lot of green. All set. Okay, so we've got a nice blank Ubuntu server and we're about to put some things on it to get it ready for Git. Now, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm putting uh, I'm going to put the info on for the files and so forth for uh, you know uninterruptible power supply. So. These are 
similar to what you've seen me do in the one for my main server so First we drop on the uh, APC PS Daemon APC because I've got an American power conversion one. So you might have another Daemon to install for yours. I'm backing up the configuration file. I'm going to edit the configuration file. And I'm just going to lean on that cut thing. And I'm going to paste in my version of the entire file instead of editing lines one by one. Something I have done in the past was I put in typos when I've done this before and had strange errors. So no typos. Okay, that's done. Now there's another file for the daemon. And we gotta go and edit that one. So back up and then edit. That's a very normal way to do things so it's configured should be yes and that's all set so control x y enter all right so let's see the instructions i read for how to test to make sure things were on seemed to be in the wrong order. I can never get the status to fire on the first try. Yeah, see, it's, it's throwing that error and I'm not sure why I get that error, but the test, the test usually runs right on the first try. Yeah, see, no problem. So do that. So let's, let's try Yeah, nothing still. So I think after a reboot that that command will fire right. Now I don't currently have plans to use a web service to look at these or manage the uninterruptible power supply but I'm gonna put the stuff on anyways just in case I don't think you're a responsible adult if you don't have a battery backup for any server. Even frown on it for a regular computer. You know what I never figured out was whether App get and apt are the same thing. I think they are. Now this is a lot of items here. But every every new server install unless you've maybe downloaded the, the image, the ISO file, right 
after they have finished updating it, maybe then you don't have a lot of updates, but usually you got a huge set of ones to put on when you first have a brand new server, so. done here. Let's see if that's different. slightly different. Okay, there's a couple of things I want to look at before I reboot. So I'm listing uh, everything long form and I want it from the etc. but I want it to start with an H. HO maybe. Because I think there was two host files two host files that I wanted to work on. Yeah, host conf and host name. So let's see. That's good. Control X out of there. I did the same thing with an nginx install that host conf got altered by nginx and I think was the cause of most of my problems trying to get a git server to work so um, so we're out of here just uh, like to reboot for no apparent reason and then uh, it's a three minute wait now we're back after the reboot and I want to just try something quick here, see if, oh, that's not what I wanted. I thought I had something else on the copy blotter. I want to check that status, see if that works this time. There we go. Reboot. I don't know. I don't know why my uh, APC daemon uh, needs a reboot before it can do that, but there you go. So you can check on it at any time in your command line, and uh, that's it for now. So the next thing that we're doing is we're throwing on specifically from the git lab instructions, you'll notice that I chopped off the postfix, the mail server. Uh, this is an internal server. I've got no reason to... Uh, oh, they were already all on there. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, the, the, I don't 
want my GitLab server to try and email out. There's nobody to email to. This is a sole project, so skipping that portion. Um, okay, so now we're on to curl. So the curl command from from GitLab, and that I think I might have talked about in the past, but uh, if you poke around on the GitLab website, you'll find it'll show you what this entire script does, and it's it's a very easy to read program script. You see a couple of functions up at the top and then the main, and inside the main you see that it's just calling out to get the repositories and then the secure key from GitLab so that you your, your server knows that it installed proper files that weren't tampered with from GitLab. So it does that all in one command which is kind of handy. Busy town. Okay, so now we're actually installing GitLab Community Edition. This is going to take a while, so I don't know. I'm going to make the video go faster. Okay, so uh, I don't know when that finished, but the uh, it's done now. And uh, just want to check something. You'll notice that uh, it's it has that wrong, which annoys me like uh, a lot. So let's let's just see here. Still the same. Still the same. So uh, this this uh, right here that I don't like that. I want to work on that and get rid of the dot Verizon dot net, and you got to do that in the GitLab RB file. So there it is, right there. External URL. I don't want to have to type Verizon.net to get to my server. I want it like that. So we control X, we Y, and we enter key. And now we have to do every time you edit that sucker, you have to uh, run the reconfigure again. And notice here it says it has never been reconfigured. So uh, do that sudo gitlab control reconfigure blah 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 so oh wait 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 why did i have that on the blotter i want this on the blotter Uh, this is going to take a little while too, so time to do some time compression. <laughs> ah, all set. Okay. So at this point, this page should load. Perfect. Okay. So the real secret to installing GitLab Community Edition is to not have other things going on on the server. This time it went well because I did not have Apache on and I did not have Nginx on. So just like Webman can run on a server without Apache or Nginx, GitLab Community Edition can run without that problem. So.
So root user just got logged in. Ugh. Root user just got logged in and uh, And there you go. So you've got uh, you get your basic screen there for for GitLab. Now um, there's a bunch of things in those other tutorials that I had uh, I had linked to you before for stuff to do. Um, so. If you want to see some keen stuff on, on what to do after you've signed in, um, down here where there's screenshots, screenshots start. They tell you some things that you can do to manage your server, to lock it down, you know, hide it from new invites and so forth. So uh, just. Uh, just go ahead and, and look at what they're doing. But that's the end of my tutorial here. So GitLab is running. And in the, uh, in the next video with putting Drupal on, uh, we're going to do a couple other things in here like sign out and then try and add a new user and so forth. So we're done.